Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to St. Mary Parish as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of the glorious Easter season. As we, so, as we gather to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, we also celebrate first full communion with some of our parish youth. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Rich Storm, assisted by Deacon Dan George. And today, let us remember in our prayers Father Joseph O'Donnell, Charmaine Feliz, Christopher Gokhan, and Scott Wesley Reynolds. In reference to the liturgy, please check that you have silenced your cell phones as we open our hearts to God's grace. Thank you, and please stand and join us in singing our opening song, number 606, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 606.
living God constantly accomplish the pastoral mystery within us. That those who were who pleased to, to make new with the holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. If you have love for one another, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During these Sundays of the Easter season, we are defining ourselves hopping between readings uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, the Book of Revelation, the Gospel. But in many ways, it's an opportunity for us to see that the Word of God is something that is alive and active. It's proclaimed in many ways years and years ago, but how it still touches our hearts, how it still helps us to see that the love of God is very much with us. Imagine for a moment that you're stranded on a desert island with enough food and water for the rest of your life. You cannot leave the island, but you can take a few people with you. Who would you pick to join you? I'm guessing many of you would choose your best friend or your spouse. Or maybe you would also choose the 
your child the one who complains the least? <laughs> Maybe it's a, also a family member sibling or maybe a grandparent or maybe it's a friendly neighbor that you also might share. Your desert friends are dear to you. And I'm guessing that none of you would pick people who cause you to get upset. People that would give you gray hair. People that when you uh, pick up your phone and you see their name on the phone, you have the opportunity of not answering that particular phone call. So I'm guessing that it would be easier to isolate ourselves rather than to live in this world, live in this day. But that's what the Lord is calling us to, to be alive to His world, His word his sacrifice that we experience as his holy people. <coughs> Jesus is challenging us to mimic him, that he loves all people. People may not respond to him the way that he was hoping they would, but he is there loving them, calling them to continue to, to manifest, to, so that he might manifest his love for them. I give you a new commandment love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. Because this is how you will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We've heard these words many times before. We have struggled with them. We know that the Time of Jesus, there were 613 laws, the commandments that people were asked to follow. And in many ways, Jesus brought about the Ten Commandments as he took those 613 and kind of synthesized them. But then he took it even, even more into that, into that synthesizing process. And he gave us the two commandments of loving God with our whole being and loving our neighbor as ourselves. And I want to share with you today two stories. Stories of two women who live the type of discipleship that Jesus is calling us to. He knows that none of us are deserving of this love, but yet he continues to give it to us. So Hopefully that we respond to it and we find ourselves being able to say yes to the Lord. Recently I saw some segments about, about Dolly Parton. And kind of what who she is, trying to unpack some of the, those things about Dolly that uh, makes Dolly more comfortable than just her bedazzling clothes and her movie 9 to 5, which again brought her much fame. But her career came to a, a, a big time Porter Wagner show. But when she later left that show, Porter Wagner, a person whom she had considered a friend and a mentor, sued her for millions of dollars. <coughs> Dolly had recognized that she had dead his ego. And so she cared about the man that she didn't care about. And so she agreed to pay that amount, millions of dollars. And then after that, it was like her career just skyrocketed. While Porter made us a series of poor financial and personal decisions, but when Porter was on his deathbed, Dolly was there at his side, holding his hand. Rather than holding back on the, rather than holding on to resentment, she chose love. And again, trying to follow the example that Christ has given to us. She saw the deep brokenness of this man, and she went about above and beyond to remind him that he is indeed love. The interviewer of the podcast, 
encounters more stories like this and often wonders how Dali seems to transcend all these divides. Today's gospel reminds us of the depths of this type of law. Dali is a disciple of Jesus, and she just happens to wear a few more sparkles than we're used to, to see, but it's on the surface that Dolly Parton seems to have a little bit more in common with another of our saints, Dorothy Day. And Dorothy had displayed, displayed for others a great love, a radical. She was a radical advocate for, for the poor and for the single person. She was a single mom, and so she knew some of the, the traps, some of the ways in which it was so easy to fall into the ways that brought about resentment, brought about hatred, brought about inability to truly see the goodness of the person. And so I think today as we hear this, we realize that Dorothy also had a radical change in her life. She had a common law marriage with Forster, Forster Bellingham, and when she became pregnant because of him and through him with him, he no longer approved of wanting to be with her. And especially with her desire of wanting to, to have their daughter baptized. It was at that point that he was walking away from them. And Forster also began stepping into another relationship. A relationship that he thought was going to solve everything for himself, for him. But he realized after a while, after 30 years, that the net who he had walked into that relationship with, that she was suffering from cancer, and an incurable cancer, and she really needed someone to care for her. And it was at that point that forced to call upon Dorothy to care for her. And she was at this point in the hospice, and so Dorothy would come and sit with her. And at first, Lynette resented her being there because she was the other woman in, in her husband's life. And she found, she found that eventually, as, as she and Dorothy, and Dorothy talked, that there was something happening to herself. Maybe it was kind of looking at her own mortality. Maybe it was kind of looking at the things that caused her to, to resent what other people said, or think about her. But she opened her heart, and she allowed Dorothy to come in. Dorothy inspired her to be baptized, to allow their daughter tomorrow to be baptized. And so even though each of these really come kind of from different perspectives of society, we see again that the Lord works through every moment, every moment, through every one of our lives. Today we're called to once again give thanks to God for the way that God is so persistent in our lives. The book of Revelation kind of gives us again maybe some metaphors of some ideas of what the kingdom of God is about. And the book of Revelation was written at the time when early Christians found themselves without hope. They were being persecuted. They were being ostracized. They were being thrown out of the, various, the very places that they thought they could have security. And so we realize that God works in each of our lives and whether we are worthy or unworthy, the Lord says to us, you truly are my beloved. And I think today as we focus on our first communion at this, at this Eucharist, again, an opportunity to see the ways in which the Lord truly loves his children, his little ones as well as us old ones. It's an opportunity again to let the, the goodness of God shine forth and and for us to say, yes, Lord, your will be accomplished. The one image that stands out in that book of Revelation is 
again, the kingdom of heaven, God coming down to us as a, as a bride, coming down to the bride. Again, showing us that we truly are a magnificent creation of God. We give thanks to the Lord today. We ask the Lord to continue guiding us because we certainly need all the guidance that we can possibly get. But the Lord is one who is constant in our lives. And at times we reject Him. We reject this God who loves us so much and yet God continues to, to be here for us. This afternoon I would like to introduce you to our candidates for First Communion. And they come with their parents and probably godparents and grandparents. They come very much aware that they belong to families of different understandings. Not only their own biological families, but their school families, their church families, the family of God. And so I'm going to ask the first communicants if they would please stand as I call their names. So if you just stand in your place, okay, so let me call your names first. Angeline Elchin. Jaden Cole. Maggie Collins. Olivia Fortin. Luke Fortin. Liam Fortin. Gabriel Nicholson. Mateo Smith. And these children hopefully bring us joy, but we would love to have them on the island with us. That um, it's their parents and their grandparents and their godparents who have helped form them to come to this day. But we also, as a faith community, are very much part of their formation. When they see what we do, and for so many of them, these years of preparation, they've come to communion with their families, but all they, at that point were able to do is to receive a blessing. Today they receive Christ inside. They have a transformation of the opportunity within each of them. And so, I hope that, hope that you will continue to example, not only of your parents, but of all of us who who we'll come together to share with you in Eucharist, not just today, but every Sunday. And uh, you, I presume you like to sing, is that right? Sure. Yes. Do they sing around the house? Um, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So this is a good place to sing too. All right. But I, I would now like to invite all of our family Parish family to applaud you today. And I'd like to invite, invite you, my brothers and sisters, to stand as we join together in professing the truths of our faith. I believe in you.
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the Church. O God, who, by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Lift up your heart. Your heart. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. They gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, O Lord, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God and our Mother, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, and with your blessed apostles, especially Matthias, your glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our daily help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm with faith and charity all of us who are your pilgrim people, your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Glaze, our Cardinal and his assistant bishops, with Daniel, our pastor, with the clergy, and with all the people that your Son has given to you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who are standing here before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all of our children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give them kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon this world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
floor to, to kneel on the bottom step of our sanctuary. away the sin of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the suffering of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you.
My dear brothers and sisters, since some of us are unable to share the Blessed Sacrament in the same manner as we are accustomed, I invite us to pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now sacrament, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you. 
number six to 